Elon Musk and his crazy new idea may be changing a part of our lives which a lot of us hate the most by aggressively trying to take over the worst place on the internet, for those of us who have an opinion, Twitter. I will tell you the fascinating chain of events that led to where we are at now and why this could be nothing but good news for all of us not willing to express our thoughts using more than 280 characters. Forbes contributor and a fellow Twitter user Tom Malogny will be here to explain, but I doubt he will agree to the same character limit. So we'll play it by ear and we're gonna start right now. Ooh, welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Unless you were living under the rock or in a bunker for the last week, you probably know that Elon Musk wants a new toy and unlike other billionaires, it's not an embarrassingly large yacht or an island or someone's soul. He wants to buy one of the world's largest social media platforms, which he has been one of the most popular users of, Twitter, or as I call it, the worst place on the internet. And yes, that includes apartments.com. A few days ago, he has offered Twitter as much as one-sixth of his entire wealth, which is about $43 billion, while suggesting in a true Russian mafia style that if Twitter does not accept, he'll take its stock. Hey, it will be a shame if something unfortunate happens to your cute little birdie, yes? The events that have unfolded in the last week that led up to this offer are fascinating and I will tell you all about them as well as how Elon can actually once again change our lives for the better if he gets his way. Now it all started in January when the world was a much simpler place and I didn't have to wonder where the nearest nuclear shelter was. Elon started slowly but surely buying Twitter stock almost on a daily basis while complaining uh, how much he hated Twitter. Once he got to a little under 10% of ownership and became Twitter's largest shareholder, it had to be made public and that's how we all found out what he's been up to besides trying on cowboy hats. Well. Funny story, he actually had to disclose this 11 days earlier before he crossed the 5% threshold in according to regulations, but he didn't and continued to buy the stock at a lower price. What can possibly go wrong? I mean, besides getting sued by Twitter shareholders and creating a high risk of SEC investigation with a high likelihood of prosecution. A uh, quick note, uh, both have already been put in motion. So at that point, because of his massive investment, Twitter has decided to offer Elon to become a board member. I'm assuming because they've never read any of his tweets, like ever. Even the former Twitter CEO said he was happy about the choice. And before we knew it, the Twitter website listed Elon as one of the board members. Now you're probably wondering why would Twitter want a proven, unhinged, crazy billionaire who hates the platform and often abuses it on their board. I mean, he doesn't even want his own chairman of Tesla position back, which he can now have as SEC's order to vacate has expired. Well, apparently Elon asked himself that very same question as well and was not very impressed to find out the sneaky trap behind such a generous offer. I'll tell you what he found out in just a second, but before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Masterworks. Later in the video, I'm going to show you a really innovative way to invest into something you thought you could never afford. So stay tuned to find out how at the end of this video. So what Elon apparently found out that being a board member at a publicly traded company actually required him to act and it probably came to him as a surprise in the best interest of the company. What? Which meant that he could no longer tweet things like this or this. And he could definitely no longer post memes like this showing the current Twitter CEO as the Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin and the former CEO Jack Dorsey as Soviet secret police head being executed by drowning. And if that wasn't enough, he would also be barred from purchasing more than 14.9% of Twitter stock if he became a board member, thus giving up growing his influence over the company. 
well played Twitter. So Elon decided not to join the board of Twitter and instead do what he does best and post a bunch of childish tweets, which he later deleted. Now, after that, for a couple of days, everyone thought that Elon will attempt a hostile takeover as he has openly stated that he had no trust in current management, but he put those rumors to rest by simply offering to buy the entire thing. Wrap it up and double bag it for around $43 billion at a much higher stock price that Twitter was trading at that time. Great offer, everybody wins. You'd think that's where that story ends. Not when the main character of the story is Elon Musk. Because instead of entertaining his offer, the Twitter board decided to fight back and implement what's called a poison pill, where for the next year, if Elon, or anybody really, acquires more than 15% of company stock, the company will issue more stock at a discounted price to everyone but him to easily dilute his share. Plus, Twitter has just found another investor in Vanguard Group to acquire a total of a little over 10% of company stock, thus becoming an even bigger investor than Elon. Now, I am taping this on Saturday, and I'm sure things could be completely different when you're watching this on Sunday or even Monday. But what can Elon Musk do with Twitter if he actually gets his way and ends up in full control of it? Well, first, and I think I speak for a lot of you watching, and let me know in the comment section if you're with me on this one, but Twitter, with some help from Elon Musk himself, has been the worst and most poisonous place on the internet. As a matter of fact, you can probably say that about almost any major social media platform. So as much as I dislike Elon's work as a Twitter user, I am excited to see what he can do with it when he is in full control, because honestly, I don't think he or anybody can make it worse. And he's got some motivation because besides the fact that he loves Twitter, he also hates Facebook and Instagram, probably because they're owned by another cocky billionaire to the point he has deleted Tesla and SpaceX accounts from both platforms for no good reason back in 2018, despite a huge part of his fan base using at least one of them regularly. So what does Elon want to do with Twitter? Well, he has given us some hints. Before his little hobby of hoarding Twitter stock was made public, he tweeted a poll about free speech and claiming that Twitter doesn't offer it, while suggesting that the consequences of this poll will be important please vote carefully. Now, anybody who has not skipped the class about the US Constitution back in high school can easily identify that the free speech does not apply to private property, which of course includes social media platforms, but uh, let's not have facts get on the way of a good story. Now, that same day, Elon has also tweeted asking if a new platform was needed, suggesting that Twitter was not. But then Elon suggested something that I think almost every single Twitter user has wondered about at least once, which was why the hell there is no edit button. You know, in case if you ever want to edit your tweets when you uh, say spread misinformation about the pandemic or illegally mislead your company's investors or, you know, just want to accuse someone of a horrible crime just because they've disagreed with you. You know, the huge. Now, when Elon posted that poll, the Twitter CEO has replied with, the consequences of this poll will be important Please vote carefully. Touche. Whether or not Elon ends up having control over Twitter is probably going to play out in the next few days or weeks. Hell, it may just end sooner than this video makes the rounds among my viewers, but whatever the result is, I can't wait. But for more, we turn to the host of the State of Charge YouTube channel, a Twitter user and a Tesla owner. Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, so this is a very much moving story, but you know, I think one of the questions I have for you here is, you know, Elon's got a lot of stuff to do, right? Roadsters to deliver, uh, you know, Occupy Mars, robots to come to life. You know, does he really have time to transform, you know, one of the biggest social media platforms right now? You left out tunnels to build. <laughs> True. So, yeah, he's got a lot on his plate. Um, 
you know, <laughs> does he need to take this on? Absolutely not. Uh, does he have a right to if he wants to? I guess, but it, I can't see how it wouldn't take him away from some of the things he's already committed to doing. Could it be a good thing that he will actually let, you know, Tesla, maybe SpaceX run, um, you know, in the hands of other executives? Or, you know, can it actually damage the timelines because he is usually, you know, the one that's pushing everybody? So, yeah, I mean, make no mistake about it. All of his companies have really strong people at the top that are running things, you know, but he likes to have his hand on everything. You know that he's involved in day to day operations. So, uh, yeah, I can't see how another distraction wouldn't take him away from his responsibilities and perhaps, you know, make things happen a little bit slower than they would have if he could commit that time to them. Now, you know, we're all kind of wondering, well, let's say he takes over Twitter, what is he going to do with it? Okay, he talked about the edit button and all of that other silly stuff. But one of the things that he's been pretty consistent on is that he wants to make Twitter a free speech platform. Uh, is that a good idea? And is he the right person to do that? Well, you know, free speech means a lot of different things to different people. We know we can't have completely unfiltered free speech. That goes back to the old yelling fire in a theater argument. You know, at some point you have to limit what is said because things cross the line. So, and I know Twitter's trying to do that now. Are they doing the best job of it? No. So I don't know how he would come in and all of a sudden correct that. It's an incredibly difficult thing to fix. Now, as far as him being the perfect arbiter of free speech, you know, I would have to say, no, he, he wouldn't be the perfect person for that. You just take a look at how he runs Tesla, for instance. He has extreme limits on who gets access to information. He doesn't invite, uh, you know, neutral journalists to any of his events. I work for Inside EVs. I'm a senior editor. It's the largest online electric vehicle website worldwide. We have offices in like six different countries. We can't email Tesla and get an answer and we never get invited to anything. So, you know, that goes back to him wanting to control information from his companies. And now he's saying, well, he wants free speech. You know, well, which is it, Elon? Do you want to control all the information or do you want free speech? Well, you know, if talking about Twitter and you, I know you and I are on Twitter, I hate being on there. I don't know about how, how about you, but... If you were to change one thing, because, you know, we have an opportunity and he has an opportunity, hopefully, you know, to actually change things for the better. I don't think you can change things for the worse, really. What would be one feature that you would change about Twitter and, you know, social media in general? So, you know, verified accounts. Uh, one of the biggest problems is, you know, you just you don't know who you're talking to and people can have dozens and dozens of accounts uh, there's bot accounts, fake accounts, spreading misinformation. I'd want to know, you know, who, who am I talking to? And if, if uh, put a name behind that face. I, I know people like to be anonymous online, but that also creates a lot of problems. When, when people are posting things, you don't know if it's real, you don't know if it's fake. And, uh, you know, I would want to see more verification. And the accounts that choose not to be verified shouldn't be as prominently displayed as the accounts of real people that you know who you're talking to. Now, you know, Elon did not really help in general to make Twitter a better place. We've known quite a few classic posts that he probably would have loved to use uh, the edit button for, but, you know, he's also done some good. Uh, what is the things that he's kind of pioneered on Twitter that, you know, both of us and you in particular would, would like to see more of moving forward? Well, you know, I don't know about what he's pioneered, but what I will say is he, he's extremely, say, approachable. He, he responds to sometimes customer complaints, sometimes journalists when they say things. And people like to say that. And I commend him for that. That's good to respond to some people, at least. And the one thing about it is he does seem to be extremely transparent. He doesn't seem to have a filter. And people love that. I like that too. And when, you, when you're when you that way, sometimes you're going to say things that you wish you could edit and go back and change. After you hit that, you know, send button, you're like, mm, should I have really done that? Uh, but I think that's part of why people love him because he seems real. And, uh, you know, that's 
most CEOs are so guarded, you never really get the real them. When Elon's on Twitter, it's the real Elon. Well, so as a Tesla customer, which you are, and a Twitter user, as a matter of fact, you have quite a good following yourself. Um, do you want him? Do you want him to take over Twitter and you know do something about it, or would you rather have him stay away and concentrate on Tesla and other ventures that he already has his hands full of? You know, I wouldn't mind if he had a major influence. You know, joining the board, I think, would have been a probably a good idea. He could have had a major influence on the board. He doesn't just have to go and buy it. it you know, it's I know it's great when you have two hundred billion dollars or whatever he has at this moment, and you you could just see the next shiny object and buy it. But I don't think he needs to completely buy it and completely take over in order to make changes and make it a better social media platform. He could have done that as a board member. Don't forget to follow Tom on Twitter, uh, but better yet, check out his YouTube channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. But listen, the bottom line is this. If making better cars, better driving tech, better space exploration, and even better ways to burn things with a toy gun is any indication of what Elon can do with a social media platform, I want it. Because much like with everything else I just listed, he is very likely to make our lives better. Make my life better by joining me for our weekly live subscriber hangouts on Tuesday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. You can set that reminder on the homepage of this channel. As I mentioned earlier, this video was brought to you by Masterworks. Much like Tesla, there is a company of outsiders using the cutting edge technology and innovation to completely disrupt the art industry. Did you know that billionaires from Jeff Bezos to Oprah Winfrey spend millions on art? And I know what you're thinking, Alex, I can't invest into a multi-million dollar painting. Well, actually, you can. Now there is a way that you and I can do just that with Masterworks. The first platform to enable anyone to be a stakeholder in famous artworks. It's like buying stock in an art piece instead of a company. And I'm not talking about a painting at a local arts and crafts fair. I'm talking about multi-million dollar masterpieces from artists like Picasso and Monet. Now, amazingly enough, contemporary art pieces have outpaced the S&P 500 by 164% for the last 25 years. You can now hop on the wave in only a few clicks with Masterworks and it's so worth it. Use the link in the description of this video to get the VIP access, skip the line and start investing in art. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged. Take it